Now let's look at the pure shear deformation and in this case this is the x axis and y axis the orange rectangle the dash one is the starting thing and we have applied a shear along the y axis perpendicular to x axis given by this blue arrow and along x axis and perpendicular to y axis given by that blue arrow. So in application of both the shears this rectangle takes a parallelogram geometry in the mechanics books it has been called as a pure shear but this is sharply in contrast with the pure shear in structural geology which I have already discussed in this NPTEL lecture series. What is that? Very quickly speaking imagine I have kept a material on horizontal surface and I have applied a compression due to this compression and this compression is perpendicular to the surface that means a normal stress or a normal force has been applied. Now this line AB comes to this place A dash B dash and due to this compression if no material loss happens then and if it is a Newtonian viscous rheology the material loss here will be equal to the material gain at both the sides. For the detail of geological pure shear you have to look at my previous lecture where other possibilities I have discussed. So you can see here. The pure shear in the mechanics book is sharply in contrast with the pure shear in the structural geology. And by the way there is nothing like pure or impure, there is nothing like impure shear. Pure is just a word that has been used. Similarly uh, we have used earlier the word simple shear, remember there is nothing simple or complex in that way but if you search in the literature in Google also you will find several papers with this name. Simple shear is not so simple. You can keep within commas and search in Google very various details will be found. Now back to the point this pure shear can be represented by any coordinate on this material say x and y after deformation becomes small x small y then small x is equal to just some example wise numbers are given 1 x plus 0.5 y small y equal to 0.5 x plus 1 y. We see certain things in these numbers that is that these two numbers are the same and these two numbers are the same. So once we use the Jacobian matrix over there once we use the Jacobian matrix here since we are not dealing with the third dimension this column and this row are out only this portion is considered and as I have described earlier we do the operation and we find basically 1 and 0.5 and 0.5 and 1 as the Jacobian matrix in the pure shear example. Now with this we are going to move into the general deformation over here. This general deformation can be represented by small x is equal to some number minus some other number multiplied by y. Let us understand what is it. Imagine this orange rectangle is the starting one. This point by some deformation has gone there, this point has gone there, this point has gone there and consider that one of the points remain in the same position and eventually that is the origin where the x axis and the y axis intersect. So in this case the body is stretched and rotated. How to represent that? Now look at these numbers, these two numbers are not the same and these two numbers are also not the same which is in sharp contrast with the pure shear case where these two numbers were same and these two numbers were same. So here the Jacobian matrix will be by applying this we get 1.3 minus 0 0.375, 0 0.75 and 1. So this is the example of general deformation. Word wise we have to be bit alert for what is known as the general shear. What was discussed just now is general deformation and you find this term in the mechanics books. What is general shear? In case of structural geology this is also known as subsimple shear 
the example is I take two plates in between let us say there is Newtonian viscous material and let us for the sake of simplicity consider that the bottom boundary is static and I apply an inclined stress on the surface. So, which can be resolved into a normal stress and a shear stress. So, a b if this is the orientation or the position of the plate at time 0. So, a 0 b 0 after some time due to this compression a 0 b 0 goes vertically down and also due to shear a 0 b 0 also slides in that direction. In combination of both since this inclined stress is applied a 0 b 0 comes like this a 1 b 1 after some time. So, such deformation is called general shear or subsimple shear and is completely different from the general deformation which has been described in the mechanics books. Now, in this diagram I need a correction basically these two lines are parallel to each other and these two lines are parallel to each other. Once I said that this orange rectangle has stretched and rotated that means there is first stretching and then rotation this will lead to these two sides mutually parallel and these two sides also mutually parallel. Now, uh, the Jacobian matrix for this general deformation which is f equal to 1.3 minus 0 0.375, 0 0.75 and 1 which I have written here can be broken into two parts or decomposed into two parts. One is this rotation matrix multiplied by the right stretch tensor and in this kind of decomposition into two parts with specific meaning is known as polar decomposition. Let us try to understand this f has been stated as one matrix R we can call it rotation matrix or rotation tensor and U which is the right stretch tensor. And in this case of kind of dec uh, decomposition it means that first there has been a stretching and then there has been rotation from this is the first action this is the second action. So, f equal to R u, u is the first action, R is the second action and then f is being produced. The natural question comes how to find out the u and the r from this matrix. This matrix can be decomposed in so many ways, but why these specific numbers, how these specific numbers will come which will have a physical meaning of stretching and rotation is to be understood. Now, let us look at how to perform the polar decomposition. The f matrix Jacobian matrix is given, find out the f transpose, then find out f transpose multiplied by f and then from this matrix square root each of the elements then what is coming out is called the u matrix. u is the right stretch tensor. So, this is your r and this is the u and u will come out. Now, with this let us try to see with actual numbers we had f is equal to 1.3.75 minus 0.375 and here I am making a correction here I am writing is at 0 0.650. So, that this one I am writing as 0 0.650 and continuing the correction over there I am writing this as 0 0.650. Okay. Now, here the transpose of f can be obtained and then f t multiplied by f will be this matrix. Now, we said that each element has to be done square root that is what has been done u will be square root of each of these elements which is 1.500 0 0.75. So, this u is this one and you can see this is the right stretch tensor has been obtained. Once the u has been obtained from here we can write from f equal to r u we can write r is equal to f u inverse. So, f is already known it is here the u has been obtained. So, from there u inverse can be obtained and from there by multiplying that the r matrix can also be obtained the rotation matrix. So, in this way in a specific decomposition of the Jacobian matrix we have found two physically meaningful matrices the rotation matrix and the right stretch tensor and in this kind of decomposition this action happened first first stretching followed by a rotation. We have seen that the Jacobian matrix can be decomposed into two matrices and their product can be presented like this R and U. Since U is at the right hand side of the R we call it as a right stretch tensor, R is the rotational tensor. Now, this F can also be decomposed in this way V R. Let us look into it. 
f is a same matrix jacobian matrix we are dealing with now here we can write this f as this matrix v and then multiplied by this matrix r note that this r is the same as the previous uh, rotation tensor that was presented the you can check the magnitudes they are the same and this left hand side one v is called left stretch tensor why because it is at the left of the r matrix if written in this way f equal to v multiplied by r it means that earlier we thought that first stretch first stretching and then rotation the same situation can arise if there is a first rotation and then stretching that's what i am writing f equal to vr first rotation and then a stretching can also lead to the same product now clearly we can see if we con compare this v matrix with the u matrix we will find that the elements are different so u is not equal to v and i repeat the r matrix is the same now the question is if this is a sequence of deformation first rotation and then and the stretching has happened then how to find out the v matrix or the v tensor let's look at here already we have found or stated f is equal to r u and now we are saying f is equal to v r so from here i can write r u equal to v r is equal to r u now i can multiply both side by r transpose that's what is done v r r transpose equal to r u and r transpose now r and r transpose will go away and only v will be here and this becomes r u r transpose we have already seen in such situations the u matrix can be obtained how it can be obtained has been explained from u the r can be obtained from r the r transpose can be obtained now once these three are known v can also be calculated and by the way the way it is written v r r transpose equal to r u r transpose similarly you can prove that u is equal to r transpose v r i will request the students to from this to come into this equation and here lies a hint how to proceed note that the physical meaning of u and v tensors are that they lead to strain jointing and fatigue of the rock this is not induced by the r matrix or the r tensor let's see how the jacobian matrix can be obtained where there is extension and also rotation involved one after another in terms of number imagine there is a material over here and then it has undergone 100% stretching along the x axis that means the initial length has become doubled in that direction so also this length has been doubled and there is no stretching along the y axis so this length has remained as it is so in this case how to represent r and u and f since there is no rotation so in the rotational formula it will be all zero i have already demonstrated the rotation and how the matrix is to be constructed and here for extension the matrix will be 2 0 0 1 which is also understood now their product will be f which is the jacobian matrix 2 0 0 1 and when i write r u that means there is first stretching and then there is no rotation in other word even if i avoid it completely 2 0 0 1 only stretching no rotation so r will be out you can see u is equal to f now suppose i think in this way first there is no rotation and then there is stretching it is effectively the same that means only stretching no rotation so i give cos 0 sin 0 minus sin 0 cos 0 and then there is stretching 2 0 0 1 once i do that this is the v this is the r and v and r multiplied will also give f again you note that r is the same matrix in both the cases and in this particular case actually u and v are the same which is also equal to the f now continuing in this direction let's look at another problem the body is stretched 100% along the x axis and 90 degree rotation has happened so in the previous case what was there only stretching and no rotation and here we are adding stretching of same uh, style 100% along the x axis and that is what is added is 90 degree anti clockwise rotation now let's see so in this x and y axis this is the material 
which underwent 100% stretching that means this length has got doubled up altogether or in other words this length equal to this length this length equal to this length and y axis along y axis length has remained the same. Now after this blue color is the final product then this material has been rotated anti clockwise if you rotate anti clockwise it will come here. So, how the Jacobian matrix will be represented here R is the rotation, U is the stretching. We have done first stretching then rotation, we are writing R, U, first stretching then rotation. This is the sequence. So, in case of the rotation matrix it is 90 degrees, so 90, 90, 90 and 90 and then the U stretching is 2, 0, 0, 1 product of these two matrices is 0, minus 1, 2, 0. So, this is the Jacobian matrix that we have obtained. So, here we are showing the Jacobian matrix and also its rotational component and its stretching component. In the case of a homogeneous deformation, a regular geometric object alters to another regular geometry. For example, a rectangle in 2D can be deformed to a parallelogram or vice versa. A square can be deformed into a parallelogram or vice versa. A circle can become ellipse, ellipse can become a circle in 3D. A cube can become a cuboid, a cuboid can become a cube. Whereas in case of the non-homogeneous or the inhomogeneous deformation, a regular geometric object alters irregular geometry. For example, we take a cuboid and compress it becomes folded. So, folds are example of non-homogeneous deformation. However, we do not see much discussion about the non-homogeneous deformation in geology. How the geologists have handled is that the non-homogeneous deformation over a wide area has been uh, subdivided into very small portions. Now, in these small portions we consider there is a homogeneous deformation that has happened. So, in this way the entire non-homogeneity has been explained. Let us look at the non-homogeneous deformation in terms of the Jacobian matrix. So, here is the example small u1 equal to capital A x1 x2, x1 and x2 are the previous coordinates before deformation u2 is equal to b capital x2 square a and b are some parameters we can put some numbers if required and u3 is equal to c minus 1 multiplied by x3. Now in this case if we apply the formula of the Jacobian matrix f is equal to a x2 a x1 0 0 2 b x2 0 and 0 0 c. So as we note that these units these elements also have the material coordinate x1 and x2 involved. So that means different parts of the body deform differently. The what has been talked in terms of f if we look at the nebula u matrix then also we find that the nebula u matrix also involves x1 and the x2 terms. So it is dependent on the coordinates. When we have earlier seen by stretching process a rectangle is stretched then inside here the x1, x2 coordinate etc were not coming into the picture. One more point if we find that the determinant of the Jacobian matrix or the debt f or the Jacobian is equal to 1 we call it an isochroic deformation and a material body has be, will be called as incompressible only if for every deformation that it undergoes is isochroic not just one deformation. In all possible ways of deformation if there is debt f is equal to 1 is maintained then we say that this material is incompressible otherwise we call that the material is compressible. In case of the rocks mostly we can consider rocks are incompressible or it has a very low compressibility. We are going to see the green Lagrangian strain tensor what it is slowly explaining E is equal to half F T F what is F? F is the Jacobian matrix minus I, I is the I 3 in this case we are considering 3 into 3 tensors. So, it is 1 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 1. Now note that what is F T F? F T F can be written as F as R u and then transpose and R u. 
this ru can be written as u transpose r transpose and ru this r transpose and r can be clubbed and this will vanish so ut and then u so what we see that ftu completely eliminates the rotational tensor r it is completely gone only the stretch component is there and this ut u can be called as c we call c as a right cauchy green deformation tensor so from this relationship e equal to half ftf minus i it reduces to because this ftf becomes c e equal to half ftf is equal to c minus i this is one of the relations this is one relation between the green lagrangian strain tensor and the right cauchy green deformation tensor now this form e is equal to half this can be represented also as eij equal to half fki fkj minus delta ij where delta ij is the kronecker delta and if we expand properly we will see that eij is equal to eji that means e is a symmetric matrix or a symmetric tensor the green lagrangian strain tensor is a symmetric one now let's explain this in more detail what it means we are going to expand it and see whether any simplification can be made so i wrote here eij equal to half fki fkj minus delta ij now note that fij is equal to it is equal to delta ij plus uij from where we are getting this is one of the forms of writing the jacobian matrix you can put i equal to j different values and try to go back to the jacobian matrix we can write instead of i i can put here k instead of j i can put i so if ki becomes delta ki plus uki and if kj becomes delta kj plus ukj now we are going to put these expressions into that top equation so eij is equal to half this multiplied by this minus delta ij so now this can be expanded each elements can be multiplied and summed up now after doing that we note that here the one of the terms is delta ki delta kj k is repeated so i can replace k by i delta ii delta ij i and i repeated so it goes away basically it remains as delta ij here delta ki delta kj here i will replace k by i so it becomes delta ii and uij now since it is both the suffixes are the same so it goes out and it remains as uij and then uki and ukj can't do anything and then minus delta ij now this delta ij and that delta ij will cancel out so what remains are three terms one uij plus uji plus uki ukj that's what has been stated here so eij can be simplified to this form also is another way of presenting now let's look at e as a matrix format i said it is symmetric so can be presented as exx exy exz exy eyy eyz and exz eyz and ezz each of these elements can in the expanded form can also be stated we are now going to see the full form of the eij where i said that the it's a symmetric matrix like this and the formula of eij was given if you put the 3 into 3 matrices we will find finally exx this term is equal to del u del x plus 0.5 del u del x square plus del v del x square plus del w del x square now here u v w has been introduced and we need to understand what has happened earlier what i was calling as x1 let's call it capital x what was called as x2 let's call it capital y what was earlier called as capital x3 let's call it capital z and the small x1 we are calling here as u small x2 as v small x3 as w so the formula that you are watching here the formulas in some book they can be in another form of x1 x2 x3 and x1 small x1 small x2 small x3 as well now i can have i can move away here and you can simply watch the formulas and you can pause the video and watch carefully and then again initiate i hope you have stopped and watched it 
Now there are certain patterns in the formula that can be understood. When it is EXX, it is the U which is like the X1 and then 0.5 that is common in all of them. Then you can see it is U, V and W and then in the denominator are del X, del X, del X. In case of EY, EY, it is V and Y. V is equivalent to your X2 and then here it is U, V, W in the numerator just like the previous one and in the denominator it is del Y, del Y, del Y when it is EY, EY. Similarly, EZZ you can work out. Now let us look at the EXY component 0.5 del U del Y plus del V del X. Here X and Y are there. So therefore in the denominator just to recollect that there is del Y and del X. And here it is U and V. U is for the X1 and V is for the uh, X2 okay, along direction 2. So now here 0.5 del U del X del U del Y and this you can watch them carefully and you will certainly find out a pattern out of it. For example, if it is x y here it is always del x del y del x del y del x del y and what is in the numerator are del u del u del v del v del w del w similar pattern you can work out. We have discussed already the right Cauchy green deformation tensor and I am coming back into it. C is equal to f transpose f, f is the Jacobian matrix. The Jacobian matrix can be stated as I plus nebula U which you can try and it will work. So F transpose means this transpose multiplied by F and we have done a multiplication. I multiplied by I will be I and I multiplied by nebula U will be nebula U and nebula U multiplied by I will be also nebula U. So therefore this is the expression after the multiplication is done. Now note that for C is equal to I. If C is equal to the identity matrix that means I am saying that say this component is equal to 0 that will mean that there is no change in length of the body has taken place. Okay. Now we are from moving from here into green strain tensor. What is that? Note this expression and make it half over there and call it the epsilon green that is the green strain tensor. So, in the component form epsilon ij is equal to 0.5 del uy del xj plus del uj del xi plus k equal to 1 to 3 del uk del uk and del xi del xj. Now for a small strain nebula u all these components in the 3 into 3 matrix will be very small number and now if I multiply that by its transpose all the elements will be very small number so that can completely be ignored. If I ignore this, what comes out is and in this case what will happen since this part is going out, its contribution here will be out. So the epsilon ij nearly equal to which is a green strain remember is 0.5 multiplied by only this much that is being done. Now what happens if we continue with the concept that there is a small nebula u then here this nebula u will be there but this term will be out. So what remains is C the right Cauchy green deformation tensor is nearly equal to I plus nebula u plus nebula u transport. And once it was defined the epsilon green in this manner you can check that C the right Cauchy green deformation tensor is equal to I identity matrix plus 2 multiplied by the G which is the uh, green strain tensor or we can write here 2 epsilon green.